What is going on, my guys? Welcome to another one of my courses in real estate. My name is Alejandro Solomon, and I've done it before, so this is why I'm talking to you about it. I wanna tell you right now, we already had an episode talking about debt and how you can leverage yourself into making huge gains. So if you haven't watched that episode, I recommend you watch it before listening to my personal story. We're gonna talk about right now my trajectory, my history in real estate, how I got started, what I did, and when I exited, so that you understand what I know about, so that you know what to take from me rather than everything. It's very important that you understand that because I don't wanna pretend or make you believe that I'm an expert in all fields. I'm an expert in my field because I did really fucking well and that's what I want you to know. But if you haven't watched the other video about how to leverage yourself into success or make money, please make sure to watch it. It's really important that you understand so that you understand really how everything is growing and why the amounts are so insane. So let's get started. I started investing in real estate in late 2010 and the reason why I did it is not because I'm a fucking genius and I was like, oh, this is, this is gonna change my life, I, I need to do this. No, the reality is after working and I was being a middleman and I was doing anything I could to get fucking money in Hollywood, I was stacking my money in a bank account and not in a bank account, in a money management account. And the reason why you do that is because every rich person tells you, what's your portfolio? What have you invested? And at least when you're ignorant and you don't know what the fuck anybody's talking about, you're like, I'm gonna go to one of these banks and open one of these portfolios. And I did, and my money never grew. It only like went down and down and down and down and down. And obviously I started my account 2008. So you can imagine by 2010, I was like, what the fuck is going on uh, with all my money? So I was making money, but all of it was going away. And at some point I said, enough is enough. I need to figure out how the fuck rich people stay rich and how they make more money because this is clearly not it. And I'm getting really nervous about my money just disappearing if it stays on the market. I didn't know what was gonna happen. I didn't understand what I understand now. I wasn't as cultured as I am now in that sense. Still very ignorant in all senses, but at least I know more now than then because I'm old as fuck. <sighs> so I decided, you know what? Instead of having my money skipping through my fingers like water, what I'm gonna do, what I'm gonna do is uh, I'm gonna invest in something that is actually an asset, something that I can have, that even if I go broke, I can have. And that was like either a car or a property. And I, I selected property simply because of one thing. A friend of mine in New York that I met in New York, I found out later uh, through our friendship that his dad basically owned half New York. And I was like, God damn. So that's why this dude's so rich. I had no idea. And then he explained to me like how he made it and what he had to go through because his dad started fucking being a janitor. Janitor and now he's a billionaire. I have mad respect for him, mad respect for him. So I said, I wanna be just like his dad. I wanna do what his dad accomplished because I'm a fucking immigrant too. And you know, I wanna build something for myself. So I'm gonna invest in real estate. So immediately I went out there and I was like, all right, let's go buy some property. And it was 2010, there was a lot of great offers on the market, there was a lot of great buildings. Uh, it was cheap because obviously the financial crisis was started by real estate. While it was residential real estate, it collapsed a lot of the commercial one too. So it was really cheap to buy a lot of square footage. And it depends on where you buy it, obviously you're gonna get a better deal. But the inventory that was available was nuts back then. So I decided, that's it. Even if I lose all my money, I'm gonna invest in a property so that worst case scenario, I can rent it all out, I can work out of there and I can sleep there if I, become homeless with a property. So I did that. I bought my, my first commercial real estate property. It was an office building. And I said to myself before jumping into it, don't grab all of your cash and dump it and sink it into the property. Because if you do that, you're not gonna be able to fix anything that could go wrong. You don't understand this business. You don't know anything about it. So keep yourself ready for any emergencies. And that's what I did. So I went out there, I bought a building that was well within my range because, you know, and I was looking at all these, and, and while I was doing that, I was looking at all these buildings and there was a lot of exciting things, right? Like you're looking at beautiful buildings in great areas in Los Angeles that were super tall. And, and I went in there and I was like, wow, this is incredible. It's got two elevators. But then I remember as someone who has an office, I need parking and the parking in that building wasn't that great. And then I started going into other places that were far away and I was like, I don't really know the flow of traffic here. I don't know what areas are growing and what areas are getting worse. But around my area, I do know what areas are getting better. So I should buy something around my area. And then I, I made the observation that I didn't want a building with two elevators because that was a lot of liability. What if one breaks? It, it seems expensive. So I started to really just basically cowardly minimize the, all of the buildings into the safest bet. And I found this building that was in between the city of LA and Koreatown. 
And to everybody, that was a fucking huge mistake. Everybody told me, anybody that I knew that invested in real estate was like, you're a moron, that is Koreatown, that's turning into Koreatown, do not buy that building. And I was like, that makes no sense. There's a really nice residential area right behind the building that I would love to live in. So I don't think so. It's got great parking. It's got a great sign. It's got a great presence. It's a beautiful building. So I said, I'm going to take this one. And it's kind of ready to go. You can just come in and plug in your computer if you wanted to leave it like that with a shitty carpet and like the 1980s wood accents. But it was a cool building. So I went in there and I modified a lot of stuff. I wanted to make it really nice without spending too much money. So I did the basic. I painted some stuff that needed to be painted. I worked on the landscaping. Of course, I did that because I'm Mexican. I wanted it to be beautiful and inviting. The parking situation was great. I added privacy to the parking, which was important to me and important to the tenants, I guess. I also secured the elevator. So I put a key card so that you can have access to each floor rather than anybody can go anywhere for security reasons. And obviously, I, I put cameras and all the... You just brought it to modern day. And that's what I did. Not spending crazy money, just like really superficial stuff. And then my office upstairs, I did change. So as I started to get used to it, I started getting bills every month from electricity, from the LADWP. And one of those bills was like $12,000, like the first one. And I was like, well, this has to be a flinch. Like this can't be right. Then I got the second one. It was $12,000 or $11,000. I was like, this is a huge problem. I haven't even moved in there. And how, why am I getting billed for this? So we looked at everything and we came to the conclusion that the AC unit was so old and so huge that it was taking all of the power out of the building. And I was like, fuck, what do I need to do? So they tell me it's really simple. You can buy different AC units and create a brand new setup, but you have to gut the entire building. That means redo all of it. And I was like, I'm not fucking doing that. That sounds really expensive. Or you can build a custom made AC unit for the building. And I was like, I want to make that. That sounds way cheaper. Wrong. So at the end of the day, it was like $300,000 to make that. That was the, the biggest expense that I had in that building. And I was like, it's worth it. The utility bill went down to 2,500 bucks a month, like the, the most expensive one that I ever got afterwards. So I was really happy because everybody was paying for the utilities and then people are not saying, man, this is crazy and unbearable. Now it made sense financially for any tenant that I would have. And as I finished the building on my way to work, I get a call from a friend of mine that used to work in an office next to me. And he goes, dude, I saw that you bought a building on Facebook. Okay, do you have tenants? I was like, not yet. And he goes, are you looking for tenants? I was like, yeah. He goes, what, are, what is the space like? So I brought him in, he looked at it and he rented that space. And then another friend of mine from the movie business calls me and he goes, dude, I need a space for my sales agency. And I was like, dude, don't worry about it. I got a spot for you. Came in, everybody sets up operation. They're paying me rent, they're paying for the building. All of the expenses are paid off and I'm getting some money. And I'm taking the third spot, the, the other floor for myself, for my production company. Started doing business out of there and he was fucking incredible. The building was free, my office was free, everything was getting paid for and I was getting a check every single month. And I was like, this is it, I fucking made it. So two years went by and I remember one day I'm sitting in my office and my assistant comes into my office and she goes, uh, Ale, there's someone downstairs saying that they wanna buy the building. And I'm like, well, tell that someone that they can go fuck themselves because the building's not for sale. She's like, okay. So she goes out there, hey guys, it's not for sale. Next day, ring the doorbell, same guys. My assistant comes into my office and she goes, Ali, there's people, that, the same people from yesterday saying that they really want to buy the building. I was like, well, tell them that we're really not selling the building. So get the fuck out of here. So she did. And then the third time, the next day, the third day in a row, they come in and they're like, we're very serious about this. We want to buy the building. What do we need to do to prove it? So my assistant goes, can you please please just let him in. Let him in. Talk to him. If you don't like him, I'll get rid of him. I was like, fine, fine. Let's bring him upstairs. They come upstairs. It's a bunch of Arabs. God bless him. My fucking people. I show him the building and I'm like, uh, so you want to buy the building? Huh? Why you want to buy it? If you haven't seen it, he's like, no, I've seen the building before. Um, I saw it two years ago. I was going to buy it and uh, we ended up not being able to buy it. And I'm like, why not? Because we didn't have all the stuff ready, but now I'm ready to make the move here. And I was like, right, right, right. And, uh, you know, I'm still touring the building, whatnot. He comes into my office and he goes, okay, let's talk business. I'm like, yeah, let's, let's talk business. And he sits in front of me and he goes, how much would you like for the property? Like I said, dude, it's not for sale. And this guy goes and looks at me and he goes, my friend, everything is for sale. Everybody has a price. What's your price? And I was like, that is the baddest fucking thing anyone has ever told me in my life to my face. And he was really secure about himself and he looked like a like a very rich Arab. God bless us. God bless my people. And uh, uh, for those of you wondering, I have Lebanese blood, I think somewhere in my body. It could also be diarrhea. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> much love to Lebanon. And when he said that, I was like, you know what? Let me, let me think about it. 
Let me really think about it because I don't know. I don't know, to be honest with you. Let me send you an email later today with a count, with a, with an actual offer. And if you like it, great. And if you don't, awesome, because my building's not for sale. He goes, perfect. So he leaves. So on my way home, I'm calling my the guy who helped me buy the building. I'm like, dude, how much do you think I can get for the building? He's like, let me do my numbers. Ah, well, you would get the same amount that you did, basically, when you bought the building. I was like, what? Then I called my CPA. My CPA has a family that has done real estate for fucking 30 years, whatever. I call him and I'm like, how much do you think I can get for my building? And he's like, let me do the math. Well, the same amount that you basically bought it for. And I go, this is fucking crazy. This is really stupid. It makes no sense. So I got home and I told Belen uh, about what was going on. And she goes, babe, if you don't want to sell the building, what do you care? But ask for whatever you want. And I was like, that's right. So of course I went and started drinking and I was like, all right, I'm ready to make a counter proposal, which everybody knows when I'm drunk, I'm a great negotiator. <clears throat> so I send an email out and I'm like, listen, man, it's great to meet you. This is, you know, the situation. I'm not selling the building, but if you want it, it's going to cost you three times what I paid for it. So that was at night. I wake up in the morning, not even thinking like, oh, is this guy going to email me? I was like, he's never going to email me. Ne nothing's going to happen. And I was in my office. And the doorbell rings, and it's the same guy. And my assistant goes, dude, I think the, the, the buyer is here. And I'm like, oh, so now he comes to negotiate. Huh? I'm going to tell him to fuck off to his face. He comes upstairs, and he has an offer signed for that amount of money. I, I am not fucking kidding. He gave me everything that I asked for. On the first try, I was like, fuck, I should have asked for more. Whatever. So... He gives me the paperwork and he goes, listen, the problem and the reason why I want to pay more is because I haven't established myself here in, in the US. I need to hold this property because I want to buy a house right here, which is where I said that I wanted to buy a house that it would fucking work, but nobody, nobody believed me. So I want to buy a house right here and I will buy buildings so that I can just walk to work. I was like, my man, you and I come from the same family. I thought and he goes, but the catch is you have to wait six months. And I was like, well, if that's going to be the case, you need to give me a deposit. And he goes, that's what I'm talking to you about. I want to give you a big deposit so that you feel confident that we're going to make it happen. And if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. We, you take deposit and we move on with our lives. I was like, that sounds pretty fair. I don't bother the guy. Five and a half months go by. And basically I call the guy. I'm like, hey, this is almost up. And I want to make sure that your money's safe and that you're good and that you're going to send it. Or am I going to keep this money? Which is kind of shitty, but it is what it is. And he goes, no, 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 you've been such a kind man and you haven't bothered me at all that I want to make it up to you. And I'm like, what do you mean? He goes, I want to give you a little surprise. I was like, sure. So he comes the day, finally the day that we're supposed to close, probably a day before. I'm at the gym, I'm getting there and I get a call from him and he goes, today we're closing, my friend. And I'm like, there's no fucking way, homie. There is no fucking way. And he goes, I'm sending you the wire right now. Uh, let me know when you receive it. Like 15 minutes go by, I'm working out and I get a call from my CPA and he goes, they fucking funded, dude. They funded, they funded and they give you $200,000 more. I was like, what? There's gotta be an error, obviously. So I called the guy and I'm like, dude, what's going on? I hear that you funded, but there's like $200,000 more. W what's the deal? And he goes, I just wanted to say thank you for everything that you did for me, for trusting me, for believing in me. And because you made that so easy. And I was like, are you fucking kidding me? And then on top of that, he paid for all of my utilities for the six months and the property taxes for the six months that I was there, which I appreciated the shit, you know, out of. And, and, and I was like, that's it, done deal, my brother. So I told the guy, listen, because of how he closed, just give me some time so I can get all my shit out and do, you know, my transition. He goes, that's no problem, my friend, I'm not in a rush. So I get the money and immediately I'm like, what am I gonna do with all this money? And my CPA goes, you know, you got to do a 1031 exchange. A 1031 exchange in the real estate world means you're doing a flip. What does that mean? That if you have a property that you bought for 1 million and you sold it for 10, you made $9 million in profit, you would normally be taxed on the, those 9 million. But if you do a 1031 exchange and buy a $10.1 million property, you don't have to pay any of those taxes, right? And, and again, it's not tax evasion. What it is, is an incentive for people to buy more real estate, buy and sell, buy and sell, buy and sell real estate in the United States. When you liquidate your positions, that's when you have to pay the taxes. And trust me, I know because I liquidated my positions lately. I was really happy, really excited. Uh, from that, I went and I bought two buildings that I really liked. One of them was a sports bar building with commercial on top. And the other one was an awesome building uh, around Vine, basically. 
And I love that building. It's uh, like the, the architecture on it was beautiful. There, uh, it's like a historic building. So I, I'm pretty sure you guys saw it on, on some videos. And when I bought those buildings, I was just like setting up like in the sports bar, I was just putting all the love because they, that building was neglected. It needed paint, it needed greenery, it needed all the graffiti out, all that stuff. So I did that, I made it pretty. I made the offices pretty and I rent them out, hiked up the rent, everybody loved it. And then on the other one, I was like, I'm, that building, I'm just gonna use it right now to put my furniture while I figure out how to rent it because it's a single tenant building and it's scary for most people. So I went out there and I did exactly that. Two weeks later after moving, I went and put all of my property in that building because I was like, where am I gonna put all my office furniture? And as I'm walking into that building, there's a Chinese guy that walks in and he goes, hey, uh, and I'm sorry, I'm not doing a Chinese accent because I'm not good at doing Chinese accents. And he goes, listen, I want to rent your building. And I was like, get the fuck out of here. I just walked in here. It's not, it's never been listed for lease. So I don't think this guy is real. I'm like, yeah, yeah, right. And he goes, are you not, are, are you going to rent it? I'm like, yes. And he goes, well, I, call, I called your agent and he didn't help me at all. Like they never answered the phone. And I was like, well, that does sound like my agent. <laughs> uh, what can I do for you, boss? And he goes, I want you to show, I, I want you to show me and my group the building. And I was like, sounds great, man. Uh, when? And he goes, now. He called someone in Chinese and 10 minutes later, there's fucking 10 Chinese people more in there. I was like, all right, here we go. So I gave him a tour. I walked him around. I showed him everything. And an hour goes by and I'm like, oh, this is getting good. Like the, the guys are really interested. They're taking pictures, making notes, calling China, whatever the fuck they're doing. And then we get to the second hour of the tour and the guy goes, all right, we really like this place. This is gonna be our spot. How much do you want for rent? And I was like, listen, probably these guys are never gonna rent the spot. They're Chinese, they don't have credit. Like, this is never gonna work out. So of course I threw a dumb number. And you know, the guy goes, that's perfect, we'll do it. So he leaves, I gave him my card, whatever. Never called me. Two weeks later, I'm at a restaurant, I'm having dinner with Belen, and I get a call. And he's my CPA and he goes, dude, I don't understand what's going on, but, there's a Chinese group that put in an offer for your other building and they want to pay this. And it makes no sense because they can get any other building for way less. And I go, I know, is that, is that for real? He goes, yeah. And the greatest thing is they're paying cash the first year of rent, like cash, straight up. Not cash in bags, but like they're giving you all of the deposit in cash. I was like, what? He goes, I don't know what the fuck you're doing, man, but keep it going. I was like, fuck yeah. So those guys rented that building. I rented the other building and then a few years later I had a huge designer that came in and bought that building after their lease was up that bought that building for twice what I paid for that building and I decided you know what I'm just gonna take that and put it into a bank literally bought a building that had a bank in it and the reason why is I don't want to deal with a lot of tenants I don't like the situation in LA with the homeless and the insecurity was getting worse I was like I want something that's a triple net and I'll, we'll talk about that and teach you about that later I want something that it's easy to manage just gonna do that so I bought a bank and I had my sports bar. And eventually I was like, you know what? I'm gonna uh, liquidate my, pro my portfolio. So I sold that and I kept the bank only. Uh, and it was the only property I had through COVID, like at the beginning of COVID. And it's my fucking luck that the only thing that didn't go to shit in real estate were banks, fast food places, and business that couldn't close. And they were still paying rent. And yeah, so I liquidated that too because all of my other businesses are doing great in, 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 in many other ways. and. There's a certain growth that I can achieve with real estate, which has been massive for me. But with my new businesses, I, we've, been doing, we've been doing well, let's say. So I'm very fucking excited about this course. This, this, this crazy story is the reality of my situation. I'm not an expert at anything. I came in, I started doing something without knowing what was gonna happen. And before you knew it, bam, here we are. I mean, shit, it's been a wild ride. And listen, I'll get into real estate probably later in life again. Once I'm more settled into who I am and I really become who I'm supposed to be at whatever time is supposed to happen. And uh, uh, for now, I'm very proud because I've helped some friends that have reached out from teams that I love in the NFL that have reached out through Instagram. We become friends and then they're like, dude, I saw that you made your money in real estate, help me out. I helped them out with some apartments, some uh, uh, residential stuff, some commercial stuff. It's been incredible. It's been a wild ride. It's been, oh, it's open insane amount of doors. Obviously, financially for me has been a game changer. And uh, yeah, I wanna show you guys how, to, how I did it. And basically the next course is gonna be, the next video is gonna be about how to get started. You wanna get started in real estate? Let's start without like having millions of dollars because people think you can only start with a million dollars. No, that's fucking bullshit. 
We'll talk about that on the next video. For now, my name is Alejandro Solomon. I hope you guys learned something today. And uh, yeah, I'm the luckiest motherfucker in the world with the worst luck also in the world. Take care.